Since barista don't have a large caramel macchiato, I come here when I'm really craving for caramel macchiato. Friday, there was a new holiday type added to our calendar, right? So CrowdStrike provide holidays. So actually what happened? There are so many things us to learn from the CrowdStrike incident. I'm not going to go deep into this or something like that, but because uh, one, they haven't provide enough uh, information yet. What has happened really happened. Only thing we can do is based on the information what we have, we can analyze and think this might be what has happened. If you ask me, can you explain uh, what has happened? But my expertise are not there in the kernel level uh, programming. But a uh, few years, like more than decades ago, I was involving uh, certain like very low level programming and integrating with operating system um, and almost close to hardware level. Based on that, I can assume this is what may have happened, but I have no 100% certainty, but I'm going to shed some light. Why? Because uh, we have something to learn from that, from the CrowdStrike incident. We are going to talk about that today. First, we need to understand what the CrowdStrike is and what it does. CrowdStrike is, in a simple term, it's a security tool, but it's not like a virus guard uh, because it's running in a very low level to understand and analyze the security threats to your server and pre prevent it from the very beginning. So to do that, it is working on a very low level. What it mean by acting as a very low level? Usually in operating systems, there are two ways uh, programs run. One is in a kernel mode and other one is in a user mode. Kernel mode work very close to CPU cycles and it is the kind of a heart of the operating system. So it, it's responsible to deal with and communicate with the hardware. Mainly that's a responsibility. So because of that, these kernel programs has a very heavy privilege, very high privilege because they need it. For example, they can see your entire memory and they can see entire um, your CPU cycles, they can see all the threads and everything. Technically, it can see everything in your machine or server what is running. But when your application run on a user mode, even you are running close to operating system, you only can see what you're allowed to see because uh, it's controlled for security reason, privacy reasons. You can see all the memory pages in your server or your machine. Tools like a CrowdStrike, they are wor working in a kernel level. What do you call for unexpected traffic? Like if you have to stuck like 30 minutes on a traffic which is not supposed to be at that time. I don't know what to call that. Anyway, million dollar question is, does operating systems are allowing to do th that? I mean, does operating system allow user programs to run on a kernel mode? Why do they do that? Don't they know that it's a risky? No, actually they don't allow to do it. So what happens is almost every operating systems, they have a something called signing program. What the signing program does is we can submit if we need to really work on the kernel mode, we can submit our program to them and they do the verification. They run a bunch of tests uh, to, compatibility, to uh, test the compatibility with the operating system and the crash runs and to make sure operating systems are not uh, impacted by this and everything and they issue a certificate. But the thing is this, so when a tool like in tools work on this security domain, especially a tool like a CrowdStrike, they need fast update because if you submit this, uh, submit new update to sign, if the new update signing process take like let's say at least one day in the security world is a risk because then 
uh, whoever going to attack to your server get a one day uh, window to attack because until the patch get update so therefore most of these security tools who work on the low level what they do is they get the signing to this kind of a, their engine but they keep their dat files and their other uh, program files separately so what this engine technically does is they read that supportive files and execute those commands and uh, behave behave the way that want so that mean technically the signature is not valid so it is like a cheat in the operating system because what they do is they submit one program and they get the certification obviously that program is not harmful and then they publish bunch of updates and that what that sign program does is they read those updates and execute those commands technically we are controlling the behavior of the program externally so the fix they gave for this incident to delete some files so that mean technically what has happened they publish this file to your machine and then this uh, whatever the execution program uh, the sign by the operating system is executing those files and those files causing a problem based on the trash dump i saw in a twitter it was a null point exception so that mean the program didn't validate the parameters enough simple and obvious explanation for null point exception is you are expecting some value uh, in a parameter but that is that doesn't exist the value is null so that is a fundamental principle of parameter validation so sanity check is a fundamental thing we learn as a software engineers so one or team of software engineers missed to this uh, fundamental practice to validate the parameters and the result was entire world went out today i got a unique parking lot let me show you thank you but truly that is not the most important question the most important question is isn't this billion dollar companies not know when something is external to their operating system ignore that and like boot properly i mean uh, i'm not a windows user for like last decades but the last version i knew like a windows server or windows xp we had the option that we can uh, boot with the last known configuration but the problem is this in operating system there are certain things called bootloader or known as a boot starters so this uh, cloud strike driver deployed as a boot st uh, boot start driver so what the boot start driver mean operating system thinks it required this boot start driver in order to boot if it is missing it feel like it's missing something required to boot why cloud strike doing this probably cloud strike doesn't want that operating system to boot if someone has deleted the file because then uh, someone can like delete the file and boot and attack to the server i don't know maybe the motivation behind that but that's what happened so this cloud strike treat as a boot start driver so then operating system thinks hey someone of us is failing someone of us is not available so i can boot so it's going to this blue screen and and that is what resolved by the delete in the file so we didn't delete the cloud strike right so what we delete was just few sys files what is mean our previous theory is correct so that mean there is an engine the cloud strike certified engine with the operating system and then there are supporting files the maybe malware signatures maybe some other commands i don't know are uh, external to that which is not certified probably someone can argue this as design and that is one side true because we can't wait weeks and weeks to get the sign while that time is our servers are vulnerable so anyway that's what has happened but this gives us one more question i don't know this for certain but i saw in the internet instead of the malware signature the supporting file contained bunch of zeros how that happened don't they check like at least at least some sanity test before launch to production I mean, at least if they deployed this on their own server, own CrowdStrike servers, this could have catch, right? So this bunch of zero file, or is this because someone intercept the uh, deploying process and someone like replace the file with the zero file intentionally to break the internet? I don't know for certain, but for me, it's a little hard to digest that like this type of a critical solution which is using entire world and deploying some zero file instead of the real signature. 
and is question that isn't the million dollar companies or a billion dollar companies is not following it's a basic fundamentals of deploying process and the adhering best practices i don't know those are just questions and i don't know how really has happened so i want to tell you this this entire analysis is based on what i have seen in the internet like the crash dump and how the operating system works and what is the kernel and user mode and what the drivers folder does in the windows and all those analysis based on the entirely my assumption and logical thinking of the what i knows and how that happened so the truth may be beyond this and truth may be different than that but if you know something is different to this please share so others also can learn then don't do this type of mistakes because sanity checks is most important and just to learn a lesson in 2024 sanity test or failing to do the sanity test or failing to validate the simple null values is crashed entire world is bad